Hi, how's it going? Um, back here with another intro to programming in different IEC 61131 PLC programming languages. Um, I'm going to talk right now about continuous function chart. So uh, I would recommend you watch my previous video on function block diagram. Um, a lot of that stuff transfers over to continuous function chart. Uh, really the only difference between function block diagram and continuous function chart is the way that it looks. Um, so we can create a new POU here. Uh, I need to log out first. Right click, add, POU. We'll just call this uh, CFC for continuous function chart, POU. And uh, POU stands for Program Organizational Unit, in case you didn't know that. Um, I'm going to create a, a continuous function chart. Um, there's really not much difference between CFC and CFC page oriented. Um, it's just kind of, CFC is kind of a hybrid between continuous function chart and function block diagram, uh, where continuous function chart is just like a, a blank sheet of infinite dimension. Um, continuous function chart page oriented kind of keeps your size constrained a little bit. Um, and it kind of helps with scan order a little bit too. Um, there's some scan order problems associated with uh, continuous function chart that you need to be mindful of. Um, for more advanced situations. So f here again, first thing, uh, I've got an empty program and uh, we're going to do our, our classic motor starter example. And uh, so first thing I need is my variables. I'm going to go back here to my function block diagram and I'm just going to copy these guys. And I'm going to paste them into our program. So these are all local tags. Um, and so now we have our variables. And uh, we're going to do basically the same logic here. So I'm actually just going to put this side by side. This is a, a really nice feature of Visual Studio that you can do this. Um, I grabbed the wrong POU there. There we go. So we're just going to create kind of the same logic in continuous function chart. So we're going to just drag an AND over here. Oh, I need to have that window selected first. Uh, let me see. There isn't an AND off the shelf, but what we can do is we can just drag in an empty box and type in AND. And uh, this will become an AND. So this little green box up here is the scan number associated with that block. So first block we drop in is going to be a 0, next block we drop in is going to be a 1, and that's basically what order the PLC will execute the blocks in. So uh, for this it's really not scan order dependent. Um, for some stuff, uh, some it may become scan order dependent and it may be something that you need to pay attention to. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in our button start here. Or, uh, sorry, button stop. It's kind of the same way. Oop. There we go. So uh, it looks a little bit different in sequential function chart. It's kind of the same idea. Here I'm going to negate it um, so that our button is not true in order to, um, or it's the value of our input is negated. Um, you may or may not need to do that, obviously, depending on whether you're using normally closed or normally open contacts on your button. Um, I'm a big advocate of uh, using normally closed on stop buttons, uh, but it, in reality it really doesn't matter that much, um, especially if you have like a, a safety system, like a, a true dual redundant e-stop system. Uh, that's really the only thing that's required to be uh, like a certain way. Um, a lot of the machines that we build at work, um, the stop button is just normally open um, because of the style button we use. It's cheaper uh, for normally closed. We only have to stop one type of contact. Um, and then the e-stops are a completely different thing. Those e-stops are uh, very, very critical um, that they be wired a certain way. Um, so for the sake of this argument, we're just going to say it's a normally open button. could be either. Uh, then we're going to right click in here and uh, maybe not. It's been a while since I've worked in this. Uh, let's put our coil in. I think we can just type it in. Yeah. So there we go. So our block number one is an assignment block. Uh, it brought that in or called it an assignment block by default. And it got scan order number one. So first we're going to evaluate this AND and determine based on the inputs if this this value coming out is true or false. Then the next thing we're going to do is set our coil to true or false uh, to mimic this output of this AND block. So from there we need to tie in uh, another block. So this is kind of a big difference of sequential function chart. And whoops, I just 
that is there we go so as you can see sequential function chart can get really really big um, in a hurry and uh, my computer isn't very good at drawing especially when I'm recording video I don't have much for uh, graphics on this thing tell you what I'm just gonna delete that block and recreate it because uh, with the video recording going this thing is really really slow there we go Let me zoom back in here there we go so the further you zoom out um, the slower it gets um, it's not very well optimized uh, Beckhoff's rendering routines right now um, that's been on my list of complaints that I sent to him. Uh, so here we go. We're going to drop in another box here. And like I said, this is one of the really big differences about continuous function chart is that you can put the blocks wherever the heck you want. They don't have to be right next to each other like they do in function block diagram. And uh, to connect two blocks, I just drag the output of one to the input of another. And uh, we can still move this block around and it stays connected. and uh, kind of does its best to make it look pretty. So uh, here let's throw in our start button. Let's keep Put that on the bottom just to make it look the same as the other one over here. And uh, put in our coil. There we go. And uh, we need to tell this block that it's an OR. And now we can build this with Control shift b and uh, we can see we have no troubles, no problems, no errors. Let's uh, log in. Should ask us if we want to do an online change. Oh, I forgot another thing again. I always forget. We need to add this to our uh, list of scanned programs. So I'm going to add existing item CFCPOU. Now we can log in. Uh, it didn't ask us to log in before because we didn't have a call to that program and TwinCat recognized that hey that program isn't used anywhere so we're not gonna build it and um, so it was the same as the program that was already running in the PLC so now that it's actually different and we're gonna run that program uh, it's asking us if we want to log in with an online change uh, this is one big advantage to Beckoff uh, a lot of other PLC platforms require you to stop the processor when making big changes like adding programs and rearranging the way tasks work um, Beckhoff doesn't do that. Um, same thing as like UDTs and add-on instructions or function blocks. Um, it it lets you do them without stopping the PLC, so you can do it to a machine that's running without shutting it down. Uh, so if we go ahead and click online, login with online change, OK. That's going to dump the program in without shutting things down. And now we can, uh, we can see our... Uh, our buttons here and stuff and I'm actually just gonna rearrange things a little bit I'm gonna drag this out and I'm gonna drag these guys out just to kinda give a little bit of space to the uh, to the online values there so now if we were to uh, to double click on this guy uh, we can see our prepared value is set to true and uh, we can write it in we can also do it up here by the way we can uh, drop in a prepared value up there so if we set our start button uh, to true and write that in, our coil comes on, we release the start button, our, uh, our coil turns off, or uh, our start button goes off, still our coil stays on, sorry. Uh, if we turn our stop button on, coil shuts off, we release the stop button, coil stays off. So there we go, there's our, uh, our motor starter. Um, no problem. It's a continuous function chart. Uh, have fun coding.